Good day, YouTube. Today is December the 8th, 2018, Saturday. I was kind of up early this morning, about 5 o'clock. Um, come out here working on that uh, Mitsubishi scooter. But last night, I thought I'd just introduce you to another project that's coming into the barn. Ventured out and picked up another scooter. Uh, one that's been on my shopping list for a while. It's a Honda. It's 1982. That's right, the Honda Urban Express. I had an 85 Honda Gyro back in the day. Not back in the day, it wasn't so long ago. I think I sold it about eight years ago. Um, and this is its a. Uh, Kind of its twin or something, if you will. Um, it uh, has the 50 cc two cycle engine, the two speed transmission, plus the um, torque converter, or however you want to say the drive belt variable pulley situation. <laughs> so, this has been on my list since back then. Um, it's fairly complete. Um, the exhaust system is gone. Somebody tagged on a uh, <laughs> Briggs and Stratton, a little three horse muffler or something. You know what? I didn't exactly get to see the back of this thing. I had no idea it was so bent. What the hell? I'm just seeing this for the first time. Bought it. Got it all backed into his garage. He never mentioned that. Holy smokes, what did I get myself into? We're just seeing this thing for the first time. I loaded it up in the dark 8 o'clock last night. Oh, man. What have I done? Oh, well, we'll figure it out. We always do. Dang it. Of course, the guy just didn't happen to mention that the it's all out of whack. Hmm, maybe it isn't as out of whack as we think. But maybe it is. Shit. Sorry. Well, anyway. It is what it is. I've got what I've got. Um, and we'll go from there. So, uh... Let's get it unloaded. I know it runs. But we'll see if it does anything else. I straightened it up in the uh, trailer a little bit. I think the bike's straight. It's the body that's crooked. And uh, that's easier to fix. So, happier about that. Alright, now we'll get it unloaded. All right, we got her out of the tray that we rolled it around back of the shop, and we'll roll it in. I'm a little happier now that I realize the uh, wheels are straight. <laughs> it's like that back rack is all out of whack or something. That should be easily fixed. Um, so again, the exhaust is going to be the, probably the more difficult and expensive piece to correct. Um, let's see, we got some bent foot pegs. That's easy. I'm okay with that little aftermarket air cleaner. The, evidently the stock air cleaner is gone. Looks like it probably mounted right up there on the belt cover. Somebody took it off, thought it was cool. Um, but uh, I guess that's not too big a deal. Um, I don't know if the speedometer works or not, but it's in good shape. I saw one of the turn signal indicators work yesterday. Um, the headlight is available, it's almost 50 bucks. I have the ring, I had to ask him about all the parts and he started to shell them out. Um, he gave me a brake cable, don't know if it's the right one or not. Um, it goes all the way down and he gave me a bracket for back there, I don't know if I have it all, but I might. He put the ignition switch in it, um, which is good because that's probably 25 30 bucks. Um, tires are old. Figure on replacing those. Uh, we'll look at brakes, stuff like that. That's cheap. There's 10 bucks for brake shoes for something like this. The, somebody cut off the front turn signals. They mounted on a long stem clear out to here. They were kind of ugly looking. So there's probably options for me like to drill and tap that and bolt some aftermarket turn signals on 
I'd prefer them to have originals, but you don't always get that opportunity. Throttle, a uh, little sticky, but okay. Lube that cable. Cable's a little rough, but uh, we'll see what the cost of cables is for these. So this has about like a 1.3 gallon fuel tank here, and it is oil injected here. So we need to clean this mucky mess up um, before we get it too far. And uh, isn't that cute? It does run. It started for him first kick. Let's see if it'll start for me at all. In the stand you go. Uh, it's about 36, 7 degrees out and raining on and off. So it's kind of cold out here. The exhaust smells like 30 year old gas so I think we better just drain all the fluids that are in it out of it and uh, start fresh I think I'll roll it over by the hose and start degreasing this sucker what do you think it's not really today's project but it might be catch you back in a little bit well I got about 85% of that twist out of it by doing all kinds of crazy things and beating out. We're down to the fine tuning. It's close. We're fine tuning now. So I've got this thing. I was laying it on its side and pulling and pounding and we're getting there. This a little easier. Put some pressure on it and smack on a strategic bend over here. I'm going to do just a little more. I'm a little over right now. But there'll be a little spring back, so. That'd be good. See what we got. I'll show you guys later. Um, it's close. A little more. We're going to do it again. It was so much fun the first time. I've got a rope on the other side. I've got this bar and this bar down here, which is twisting the hole. Frame. Okay, I went a little farther than I did last time. I'll hit it a little harder.
That's pretty good. Yeah. Spin it around so you got a chance to see it. You saw it before. Wouldn't look at the license plate too carefully, but the tail light and the rack looks pretty square. It might not be perfect yet. I think I better take another stab at it. That's what we're working on. So, oh, I got a friend coming by to borrow Indian stand, so I got to go drag that out real quick. And we'll come back and continue. Well, we slid the silver pigeon over on the lift to make a little room for the Urban Express. We're going to work on it instead for a little while. I am decided uh, kind of an executive decision to give up on the stock carburetor on the Mitsubishi engine in the uh, silver pigeon and to buy like a 22 millimeter Makuni carburetor and build my own intake manifold. The needle and seat doesn't hold, none of the seals hold, I can't get a kit, and why fight it? I'm not going to get there with it, um, so we'll back up and punt. We'll save it um, in case a kit becomes available someday, um, we can always put it back, so we won't ruin anything. Um, the uh, Urban Express of... Uh, Drain the fuel out. So this guy that had this, you know, literally drug this out of a field. There was a couple of them, he said. Um, the other one, I guess they jumped, which is sad because uh might have been some good parts on it, even though the motor was froze. Um, I loosened up the little fuel bowl on the uh, sediment bowl and took a little junk out of there and drained a little fuel out of the bottom. There's not much fuel in this thing at all. Um, it uh, still has that odor of very old gas, but the gas came out of it. Doesn't smell too bad. I've got uh, this brake cable stuff out in my car. I got to go get it. We'll try to fit that. Um, said it didn't have much for front brakes. Just needed adjusted, and so I adjusted it. Um, I spun the front wheel. Didn't get the speedometer to do anything, so I pulled the cable off the speedometer. Of course, it was broken. And the uh, speedometer wouldn't turn. I'm going to put you in the stand real quick here. Hang on. So I uh, set the... Excuse me for a minute. Yeah. I put the speedometer kind of on its face um, and threw some WD-40 down in there, let it soak up for a little while. And... We got the speedometer freed up. This is the piece of the cable <laughs> that I have checked up in the drill. That's a piece of the cable that was there. So we got the speedo working, and uh, that's a good thing. I'll put it back on and order a cable. Before I do that, I was going to uh, hook up the light wires and make sure the light is functioning in it. What can happen is the uh, charging circuits on these things aren't sophisticated. And if you don't have a battery, the thing could put out, I don't know, 20 volts or something and uh, take out all of your light bulbs. So you're supposed to have a good working battery in these if you're going to run them because of the charge system so uh, I thought I'd look at the electrical a little bit and go through kind of front to rear bounce around a little bit and see what works and what doesn't work I was going to show you I've been kind of fixing up bikes for forever and um Using inexpensive cleaning products can be a good thing. Hang on, I'm going to put my gloves on here. It's still pretty chilly. I got one heater going, and uh, it's like 40 degrees out. 
so I thought as I started to clean this up, I'd show you what I use. It's still got weeds growing up in the spokes. So for sure this was a barn find. So go to the dollar store and get their dollar store furniture polish. And I just use this on everything. P upholstery, chrome, rubber, whatever. It's got a little bit of cleaner in it. It's got a little bit of wax in it. And for a dollar, you just can't beat it. So look at the chrome. If there's big rust in there, of course, we're going to get out the uh, lime away. But just for the surface rust, this dirt, the years and years of sitting. How's that? For a one wipe. There's a, a little bit of rest here or there that we'll come back and clean. This tire shot is about ready to fall apart. But we're sitting around in the shop here. We'll get her a little bit cleaned up. See, I did a little spot. That's what I thought I'd show you. My towel's getting yucky. So anyway, I buy these 10 at a time or so so that I have a bunch around. I'm actually running low. So I just thought I'd go around this thing, kind of clean the whole thing up. It just gives you a chance to look the whole thing over. Yeehaw. And looking at things that need to be replaced, adjusted, cleaned, de-rusted, etc. The chrome is in surprisingly good condition, but Honda's always been one for decent chrome for something that's sit outside for so long. So, I'll start fiddling with this thing, and I'll bring you back, tell you what I've found, what I've accomplished. i got to run down and get some more non-ethanol fuel. I serviced all my generators and filled them all up. I'm out of gas. Good gas. And uh, I would need to top this thing off with some non-ethanol fuel. Anyway, back in a flash. What do you say we straighten out those foot pegs? They're looking a little crooked. We'll fire up the rose bud. See if we can't start a fire. Get the air out of the line there. Right? There we go. Try to get a small one going here. I don't need to bend the whole bike.
rubber thing out of here. I don't ruin it. Bang. I'll be right back. Let's go to a big brazing tip instead. But the uh, rosebud a little big. Well now, we'll do the other side. Probably it might be cool to spin this around, hang on.
Just shooting stuff everywhere here. Hope I can find that pin. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Gonna get a bigger lever. I'll uh, get a big lever and heat that up one more time and get her pulled into place. Well, how far did we get with the Urban Express project today? Kind of winding down a Sunday. It's coming up on 4:30. Time to. Uh, wind down and hit the buy it now button on a few parts I've been shuffling on my uh, eBay account and various other websites for the uh, 1982 Honda Urban Express the headlights very expensive about $45 plus I gotta get all the hardware so I've got that on one site that has all the correct hardware the little bolts that go through here the bolts that bolt the I'm sorry get out of the glare the bolts that uh, bolt the the ring in are there there's a bolt on top that bolts to the headlight the ring to the headlight and then in the corner of the ring where did I put that over here uh it's over here there it is there's an adjuster screw right there um so i need that screw and a spring and a nut and stuff so uh we'll get all that stuff coming i sorted out the electrical pretty good today turn on the key Right now that's a brake light because the uh, left lever is hanging and so the brake light switch is activated. Um, but I got both brake light switches working on the hands. You one on the left, one on the right, one for the front, one for the rear. The turn signal wiring is fine. The turn signals on the rear are just junk. I tried to kind of restore the sockets, but uh, they're just so rusty and stuff. No sense fighting them. New replacements are about 25 bucks a piece. I'm not going to spend $100 on turn signals for this thing for uh, $14. I ordered a full set of four LED amber turn signals. I um, have to modify the mount there a little bit to put them on, but that will be fine. The front had those holes right there. I'll have to make a bracket for them of some kind. Not a big deal, we'll bolt them on and um, the wiring is in the headlight for the front turn signals. Um, so the switches, everything works except the horn button. Um, haven't got that working yet. I shot some WD-40 in it numerous times today, hoping that would free up. But then again, the horn doesn't work either. I shot some WD-40 in the horn and then hoping that it frees up. Will it all? Oh, I doubt it. But you know what? It is what it is. Uh, this morning, uh, as you saw, we straightened up the foot pegs, got them looking good. Went ahead and painted that while we were at it. We had these plastic covers off and went ahead and painted those as well. They were the most ugly thing on it, and now they are the nicest thing on it. Kind of helped the rest of it. Cleaned up the chrome here and there. De-rusted a little bit here and there. Cleaned up the battery box. Get a battery coming for this thing. It's just little 12 volts only. I think the one I picked was a sealed AGM battery, like 3 amp hours. Um, I just have to confirm the dimension before I buy it. I'm still struggling for an exhaust, still struggling to find the rear brake cable. I don't know what to do about that. 
But, you know, I've just been fiddling, degreasing it, uh, cleaning it up, uh, polished it a little bit. It's uh, looking presentable, and that's all it needs to do is look presentable. So it's been a fun day uh, working with this thing. Um, I still didn't get any gas in it, but that's fine for another day. So I do want to get a bunch of parts coming. Um, I have a, everything now, I think, for the CT70. So sometime over the holiday, I have a, you know, two four-day weekends, basically. And I won't get that again for like six months. So I look forward to spending some time in the shop knocking the CT70 out as far as I'm going to take it. And uh, we'll get some parts for this and maybe a carburetor for the uh, Mitsubishi over there. So uh, lots of fun. I got a seat cover sitting in my shopping cart. Um, can't remember all what else, but uh, it's uh, coming along. We're just running 12 volt on a battery charger here. Gentlemen, I got this from, put an ignition switch in it. Uh, sure wish the rear brake cable that he got was the right one. Um, that's the really the only struggle. I know I can get aftermarket exhaust for this. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And even what's on here isn't even tight. So, thanks guys for hanging with me in the shop this weekend. Uh, welcoming in a new fun project. And uh, I might even look I'm getting tires for this thing. The front one is shot. The back one, excuse me, is knobby, and it certainly doesn't need to be. And we will go from there. Thanks for watching and commenting, subscribing. Hit the like button, please. These are absolutely free videos, but you could pay me by. Hit the like button. Appreciate it. See you next time.